Hi, folks. You are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cup on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in the armpit of the San Gabriel Valley in Southern California. That guy out there is a Matt Metris in the nondescript <laughs> body part of upstate New York. <laughs> In sweltering, you said it was hot. You guys are in. It was. Night? It's been hot. Yeah, it's been very wow. hot. How's the humidity? Uh, it rained for a while today, so it's been extremely unpleasant. Wow. Hey, I remember those days when I was in San Antonio. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the except the humidity there probably has got to be like same as Houston. Uh, it's oppressive. Oh, yeah. You mm -hmm. walk out your door and you're just you're you're like it's all of a sudden you're walking in slow mo because there's so much moisture in the air, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever tried walking in the bottom of your pool? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> that's why. Bring a anyway, snorkel. Folks, yeah, with a snorkel, yeah. Uh, that's exactly, yeah, but see, the snorkel wouldn't hit, yeah, I'd probably drown with a snorkel in all this humidity. <laughs> uh, we have been beside ourselves with, with this treat. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to find this tequila. It's called Mi Tierra. Yes, there are a lot of tequilas out there known as Mi Tierra. This one is just Mi Tierra, okay? Not Mi Tierra del Vol Volcán de Mi Tierra and uh, Mi Tierra de Mis Amores and, and all those other names. You know, this one is just Mi Tierra. And it nominated for Brand of Promise nominee in, in packaging. We love the foil label. We love the Blanco and the Repo were, were surprisingly old school delicious and i can't wait to try this is the añejo apparently they have an extra añejo we did not get but that's okay yeah i know uh because i want to see how this progress this yeah. is a really interesting progression uh i didn't expect the repo to be aged in in uh french oak i i didn't even look at the notes before we got on on camera and I noticed, I, I told Matt, I said, why, it's really sweet. But I was confused because it was sweeter than whiskey notes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I read it that, you know, we figured it out. So, so I haven't looked at the notes yet, but I'm going to pour it in my Glencairn. And we're going to taste it. Then we'll tell you all the ins and outs of stats and stories. Um, in, the oh. in the bottle and the labeling, it makes it look a little bit darker. This is not as dark as I would have thought. Yeah. This is, and it's 18 months, this one, so. 18 months, okay. It's it's almost slightly warmer than than the repo. Mm-hmm. And I think, Matt, you said that the mouthfeel was a little bit, um, was more thinner. Thinner on the repo, absolutely, and and the uh, the blanco seemed to thicken up, so to speak, as we let it sit and, and open up a little bit. So, I didn't give the repo that much of an opportunity because I drank it all. Yeah, yeah. Well, once once we read the flavor notes and we, oh, that's why. Um, beautiful string of pearls again, very much mm. the same as we got in the repo solo. Um, just sheeting down the glass. I, I hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure if they can see it on my camera or not. I'm yeah, yours looks better than mine. The light is kind of blowing it out, but you can yeah. see it pretty well. Well, the uh, yeah, oh, this is so pretty. Mm. Now, I, and again, I thought it would be darker, but um, uh, does it tell us if they're still using the French oak or are they using another another barrel? Nope. Yeah, still says French oak, 18 months. So okay, so we surmised. We, we, we did a little bit of a, a, a detection uh, in our in a, you know, detective work, and, and we surmised, or I did, that they were using the used French oak mm -hmm. because I'm not used to, when I see fresh French oak, it's t typically darker, and this reminds me a lot. You mentioned G4. You know how Felipe Camarena looks for these mm -hmm. ancient mm -hmm. barrels, right? They're, they're falling apart because he just wants to present his agave. Well, yep. this, this one looks to me, and it's reacting, the color is uh, as a, uh, a very much used French oak barrel. Yeah, especially for that amount of time to be this light in color. Wow. Oh, that's pretty. Wow, that's almost like perfumey. 
Oh my goodness. Ooh, it really is. Wow. Wow. What happened? That was like turned up, it cranked up the, the aroma like notches up. Mm hmm So caramel, caramel jumping out at me. Now you got toffee on the reposado, but this is this is a I lot did. deeper. It's deeper. Mm hmm Oh my goodness. The aroma doesn't match the color. No. Some dried fruit, maybe? Could be. I, I, I you know. <coughs> oh, it's it's very sp spices. But it, it's interesting. It's not like baking spices. It's more like um, spices you get in, like, tea. Or since you mentioned the tea bags and you sure, know, your sure. shelf back there. <laughs> It's like raiding somebody's spice cabinet. Holy cow! Now as it opens up, I'm getting more of the orange. It's more of a uh, of a jelly orange or like a preserve mm. or like a like a um, um, God. What I hate those too. I, I'm not I'm not much of a fan of those. Uh, marmalade. Mm -hmm. It's marmalade. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like a dried cherry, but it's sort of in that same neighborhood. Yeah, I'll buy that too. It's just not deep. It's like a mm -hmm. like a um, maybe like a uh, it's not a not a candy cherry or brandy cherries or you know right or like a maraschino. Not a not a ton of oak either, which uh, lends credence to these being uh, end of life barrels. Yeah, <laughs> is that what we're gonna call it now? The yeah. end of life barrel. <laughs> Uh, the euthanasia barrel. <laughs> I like that end of life. <laughs> Take it to the dark place, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, here we are. <laughs> uh, wow, that is just, again, I'm surprised. Uh, it's not what I expected because the Blanco, I really wasn't, you know, when I found the gnome number and I found the distillery and saw that it's only a handful of brands coming out of there, and I've never seen this one. I've seen only one other one, the Don Fernando TKO, I've seen before. It looks like a boxing glove. It's a red boxing glove. Um, but I've never seen this, never even heard of it. And so I, I was expecting, you know, old school. Mm -hmm. But these are these two expressions, the Repo and the Añejo, have been surprising. Oh, we got to dive in, man. Mm -hmm. Let's dive Let's in. Do it. Wow. Yeah. It's it's it starts off almost um middle of the road kind of stereotypical on Yeho and then some flavors start to pop out as you move it around. It's almost like a burst of of orange. Yeah. Um, and what a nice long finish too. Wow. Mm -hmm. And again the blast of uh, I won't even call it a hot cinnamon. It was more like a blast of it's still peppery to mm -hmm. me. Not cinnamon, not like a red hot or anything like that. Um, but yeah, this is so far the Blanco and the Reposado, the longer you let them sit and open up, the more layers tend to come out. I'm thinking this is one of those you got to spend some time with. Yeah, not a lot of oak on this either. No, yeah, no. Well, again, yep. it's, it's it an all makes it all ties together. All the yeah, end of life barrel, right? Mm hmm. Um, again, the mouthfeel is um, uh, um, uh, lighter in structure in the repo and the anejo too. So I, I felt it was very lighter than I expected. But it is it does finish dry though. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's really neat. It's that's the kind of unique. We're not we don't see that a lot. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I get more wood notes on the retro nasal yeah. than, than you do initially. Mm -hmm. Wow, these barrels must be falling apart. Because, <laughs> you know, 
the, the one thing I can't say is is not I'm not getting well if it's if it's turning into orange it's from the citrus of the you know that we got on the blanco mm -hmm. that has to be the characteristic of the tequila that's coming through is a, the, yes. the citrus notes um Okay, so so what's the process on this again? The, the, the... So uh, masonry ovens uh, looks like a shredder roller mill. Uh, they say uh, fermented in wooden vats, open air. Uh, we saw some stainless vats in their picture too, so we're a little confused about that. Double well, distilled in copper. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure that they have the wherewithal to be able to make. This is, I believe that this sounds to me like it's the flagship brand of the distillery could be yeah uh which means that they have the wherewithal to be able to do the stainless steel open i still like that they have an open air uh fermentation i like that mm -hmm. uh if it's covered then they're they're heat controlled because they want to crank a lot of these out they want to shorten the time of the fermentation if i believe that this one is fermented in 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 the wooden vats Mm. Uh, we did a little again detective work on the on the on the small deck that they sent us, um, and and if we look really hard and amplify the, what we're seeing, what we're seeing, I think there's one big wooden vat behind all the the six stainless steel vats. Yeah. we we went full CSI on this, so enhance, yeah. <laughs> enhance, but there's no. I mean, the picture is such low resolution. <laughs> yeah, it's like if we start enhancing, it just pixelates, and we can't see anything. Oh my God. But um, what's the pro okay? You're gonna so far the blanco and the repo have killed me because the quality of this tequila does is not is there's no parity you know with with the price point. So mm. what's this price point? This is a French oak rested French oak, yeah. Ninety bucks? No, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Thirty thirty six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Qué están haciendo? No, mira. See this? You need to raise this price up $10. Mm -hmm. Your folks, ladies and gentlemen, you're paying $10 more for, for less quality than what you can get in this tequila. Mm -hmm. This is, this this is, is exceptional a value. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, you know, that's the other thing. Maybe I should. No, no, I'm going to go ahead and say nominate this as a brand of promise in the uh, Neo category. But I agree with you. Brand of promise. I really need to get one of these to you. <laughs> I like, probably you know, just lose it anyway. To be fair, yeah, I gotta, yeah, I gotta throw. I'm gonna throw in some some super glue too while I'm at it. Just just to you know, I'll throw that in for free. <laughs> I got a nine year old man. I got plenty of popsicle sticks. <laughs> uh, he could make a bunch of these for us. <laughs> uh, sweatshop labor. Yeah, we we can, can send him to the other teachers. Yeah, you have child labor. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, folks. We're just, you know, when you taste this kind of quality, and it makes you giddy, you know, because I'm I'm so, I'm ticked off, and so, you know, it's kind of like both. I'm fighting it because I know that our, there's stuff in the mainstream out there that people are paying 10 bucks more on every level of expression for less quality than what you're getting in this bottle. Mm -hmm. And I think I think I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna nominate this as a brand of promise in the value category. Mm -hmm. And that's a shocker. To me, that's a shocker. Because this thing, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm speechless. Yeah, okay. that's gonna be hard to compete with in the value category too. That's, yeah, uh... yeah, because tequileño, the quality that you're getting from tequileño, which, is, mm -hmm. which we love, but but tequileño is a, is a, in a legacy category all its own, and they're making tequila like these people are making tequila. Okay, so if you're a tequileño lover, you need to find Mi Tierra. And yeah, like I said, there's a whole bunch of these that are named Mi Tierra. This is the only one. Let me give you all the numbers on it so that we know. Uh, this is coming out of distillery uh, uh, Tequilera de la Barranca de Matitan, 1473. Uh, the signature on the on the neck tag is uh, Carlos uh, Carrillo, right? Is that the um, mm -hmm. okay? And apparently he is the patriarch of the of the uh, of a of a grocery store, and his children or his grandchildren started the distillery because 
they all wanted to, you know, you can do stuff like that. If they have no three tier system, so they can make tequila, sell it at his stores, his grocery chain, and that's how it's done. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it, and and uh, it was started by a woman. This is a woman owned distillery, or uh, and I'm assuming that she's the only. They only they're only they're, they've been around since 2000, so I'm assuming that she's still there. Uh, and let me give you her name too. If you're now if you're looking to support. Uh, female-owned uh, distilleries or brands is another one. Ingeniera Ana, Ro Ana Rosa Carrillo started this in uh, 2000. She opened her own distillery, and I believe this is the flagship brand of that distillery. And my goodness, uh, just amazing! It's mm -hmm. amazing. I, I can't I can't stress enough to you folks how much you really need to find this. Um, I think Matt, you only found it in one place so far. Yeah, yeah, I found it on Old Town, which has a pretty wide selection. I was just while you were talking, looking on my distrib distribution site for New York State, and it comes up in the database, but it's not assigned to a distributor, so um, doesn't seem like anybody's carrying it. Uh, I think you should tell your brother to pick it up. Yeah, for real. <laughs> the, if you don't know much about Matt's background, but he he and his uh, brother. Uh, Matt does a lot of uh, uh, tastings at his brother's bar, which thankfully have, has survived the pandemic. Give us the name of the, of the, I think it's a destination location. Give us the name of the yeah, bar. Salinas Mexican Restaurant. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, a bar and a restaurant. Uh, business is, is brisk, I, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's crazy. Staffing is a different story, but business is great. Good. Thank God. Uh, because I really would like when when you get a moment when you get a chance I know you're you're a busy guy he he because all these guys all these TJs they all work for tequila because they work for somebody else so they work for themselves um, maybe after tax season is over for you you can do something like a, a, a special just a camera phone and and you know show us what the bar oh, yes, totally initially uh, the way Matt found us he submitted a video to us uh, demonstrating a new tequila we had never heard from Gnome 1414, which is one of our favorites. And that's how we found out that who Matt was and where he comes from and where and, and the background and, and the tequila too. It became one of our sponsors uh, when we were doing road tours mm -hmm. and we loved it. And next thing you know, he's a full blown TJ. You've been doing this, what, four years with us now? At least, yeah, it's been a long time. Almost TJ five. Yeah, yeah, he's almost a legacy brand, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near the end of life. <laughs> I had way less gray hair when I started doing this. Yeah, well, you know, and during the pandemic, he had that full-blown, you know, uh, hunting beard. He That's had the true. hunting beard. <laughs> Is it hunting season? No, man. I just, you know, <laughs> rolled out of bed. There's no uh, reason to go outside, so. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, folks, that's our take on Mi Tierra de Añejo. Go find it. Go get it. It's a brand of promise nominee. It's a value category nominee. It's a brand packaging nominee. This is a winner. Okay, so that's what I'm telling you. I'm going out on a limb and saying that. But you've been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Follow us on Instagram. Follow Matt on the Instagram. If you're listening to us on the podcast, go ahead and download it on Spotify. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe. Give us a comment if you've had this tequila before. Uh, hit the notification bell and give us a like as well. Mm -hmm. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>